Dr. Rick Rutledge was very worried about the river's inlet sockeye because they were in an unexplained decline, a lot like the Fraser sockeye. I had no idea as to why the numbers were so low. I tried to think as the season was winding down what on earth the cause might be. It had to be something new, I thought, because it hadn't happened before as far as I could tell. So I eventually sent some samples in for testing. I remember when he called me, it was a, a dark October night, and he said to me, you know, Alex, are you sitting down? It was like he was going to tell me that someone we knew had died. And he said, the tests came back positive for ISA virus in Rivers Inlet smolts. Salmon influenza, ISA virus. Most lethal known salmon virus worldwide caused $2 billion worth of damage in Chile. Um, no country wants it. It has spread everywhere in the world where Atlantic salmon are being raised in pens in large numbers by the Norwegian companies. ISA, infectious salmon anemia, the most lethal known salmon virus worldwide. It was first detected in Norway in 1984. At first, the virus seemed benign. But once it incubated in the salmon farms, it mutated into highly virulent and lethal strains, which can kill millions of fish at a time. These deadly strains of ISA spread to new countries by way of egg imports. The industry farms mainly Atlantic salmon, so they must import Atlantic salmon eggs from Europe into the country in which they are operating their farms. When the ISA virus wiped out 70% of Chile's salmon industry, the strain was traced back to Norway. The difference between Chile and BC, though, is that Chile has no native salmon, whereas BC has much to lose, with thousands of runs of five different species of Pacific salmon and entire ecosystems and economies that depend on them. Nobody knows what happens when you introduce a virus into a, into a population that hasn't been exposed to it before. It, it might be totally benign, or it might have a devastating impact like smallpox had in the Aboriginal populations in North America or the, the uh, bubonic plague had in Europe. My first response was, get out in the rivers. Let's, see, let's have a look around. Let's see where this is. It's the same thing I did when the sea lice, when I found the sea lice in 2001. I just made a net just went around and started looking at all the fish. We dashed down to the lower Fraser River because we had been getting reports from people down there that there was a massive number of, of salmon dying in the river without spawning. And this uh, big yellow Chinook salmon, uh, a white Harrison Spring, that had ISA virus. This sockeye had ISA virus. This coho had ISA virus. We tested 11 fish in the Fraser River, a, a river of millions, and we got it three times. Alex uh, didn't fool around. I mean, she sent, she decided to send her samples to the lab in Prince Edward Island that is recognized by the World Health Organization as being one of two labs in the world that are entitled to test for ISA with international significance. She also sent it to Dr. Nyland in Norway, who's the leading expert on ISA in the world. So she, she sent these samples to the two people who were the most credible international folks. The CFIA came and took our samples and said they were going to run tests, and we were supportive of that. The Canadian Food Inspection Agency contacted me and asked me to turn over all my samples, which I did. They shipped them to the testing lab in Moncton, and uh, they tested them for uh, the remaining samples for the infectious salmonemia virus. Very quickly thereafter, the CFIA gave a press release as well. I had been allowed to look at all the Cohen documents prior to this time. I was a participant, a legal participant, and, and, and reading their emails, they were fighting us, uh, not trying to protect us. This is an internal CFIA email from Joseph Bears to a whole list of people. It says, Con, it's clear that we're turning the PR tide to our favor. And this is because of the very successful performance of our spokes at the technical briefing yesterday. 
You, Stephen, Peter, and Paul were a terrific team. Indeed. Congratulations. One battle is won. Now we have to nail the surveillance piece, and we will win the war also. Oh, what war? What, the war against us, the public? <laughs> uh, Khan, who's Cornelius Keeley, comes back, and he says, hey, concentrate on the headlines. That's often all people read or remember. All labs that had tested for the ISA virus were invited to speak at the Cohen Commission's ISA hearings. The hearings then turned to the fresher samples that had been tested by the four different labs. Dr. Nyland, uh, I'll turn my next set of questions to the testing that you've done. I understand you've tested several batches. Of what were your results? Did you obtain any positive RT-PCR tests for ISAV in those samples that you tested? Among the first 48, I had the one positive. In that testing, we found two positive samples out of 48. We did indeed obtain um, ISA sequence. There's uh, only one lab that didn't find it, and that was the reference lab from DFO in Moncton. And, uh, you know, it turns out they were sampling a totally different segment from everyone else who actually found the ISA virus. And uh, so, uh, you know, uh, we've well, got three or four labs that are finding it, and one that's a government lab that's not. You know, you have to uh, pause and, and uh, wonder what's going on, whether they really do want to find it or not. We learned that Dr. Miller was prohibited by DFO from testing for ISA virus, but a salmon farm came to her, and their fish were turning yellow and dying, and they couldn't figure out why. And she decided to test them for ISA virus, even though she was instructed not to. She wanted to get to the bottom of it. And we did um, identify some positive ISA fish among their fish. Uh, it was decided that we should contact Ottawa about this. And um, so Stephen Stevens in Ottawa was contacted. And we basically told um, them the results that we had. I, I don't think that... Uh, that um, Stephen Stevens in Ottawa was very pleased that we were doing this testing. Basically, there, there, there was a general feeling that as a scientist, I should not be undertaking research on something um, if I didn't understand the ramifications of, of what the results could, could do. Everyone who's reported the virus has suffered a consequence. Uh, Kabenga got his lab audited. Um, Dr. Neeland had a, an ethics challenge against him. Dr. Miller gets muzzled as soon as her work takes her towards the fish farm viruses. Um, everyone who tries to speak up about these viruses gets shut up in some way. Three leading labs around the world, and including DFO's own lab in Nanaimo, had found ISA. And CFIA's response was to attack those labs. They went in uh, to Dr. Kabenji's lab and tried to attack Dr. Kabenji's credibility and the credibility of his lab and to use all of the mechanisms of government that they could do. Any positive result is a difficult result. People don't easily accept positive results. And the, the, the automatic reaction will be try to find some way of explaining it away in some form. So, yeah, that is always the case. It's always there as long as you come up with a positive result. But, you know, we are so confident in our work that we just cannot sweep it under the rug. So we are continuously testing, and once we find a positive result, we report it as it is. Dr. Kabenji had the temerity to announce positive test results, and the result, his lab is being analyzed by you. And Mr. Stephen, I suggest to you that the federal government is going to try and take away his OIE certification as a punishment for this. I predict within the next 12 months, Canada will go after his credibility. Isn't that right? I disagree. 11 months later, the Canadian Food Inspection Agency would attempt to strip Dr. Kabenji of his World Reference Lab status, citing results from an audit they had conducted on his lab. If Dr. Kabenji's test results are officially recognized, 
then BC would be internationally listed as positive for the ISA virus. But if the CFIA's attempt at suspending Dr. Kabenji's status are successful, then BC will remain listed as free of ISA, despite the numerous positive test results. What's happened in Canada is salmon disease has become a federal secret. And the reason we found out at the Cohen Commission is that if this flu virus is confirmed in British Columbia, they say the border is going to close for BC farm salmon to the US and China. Let's say we do find ISA uh, in BC and all of a sudden markets are closed, then there will be no trade, basically. <laughs> That's when a real aha went off in my mind. I'm like, oh, I totally get this now. You guys are hiding this because it's going to damage the industry. It was so transparent and clear. So, you know, this is where you can see the size of the thing that we're coming up against. This is international trade. Our tests are saying ISA virus is here. The province has told these trade partners that it's not here and these fish are going over the border. Is this spreading ISA down the coast of California? Is this spreading ISA into Washington State? We don't know. They won't accept the results of any other lab than the Moncton lab. They know the Moncton lab uh, is incapable of finding it. The results have to be confirmed through our national reference laboratory. And my understanding as of this date, those, none of those tests, and as of this date today, none of those tests have ever been confirmed from our national reference laboratory. So there is no evidence to support that ISA is occurring in either wild or cultured salmon in BC. Yes, there is no evidence to support that. Do you think ISA is here? Yes. Well, certainly ISA is here. I clearly believe that there is a, 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 a virus here that is very similar to ISA virus in, in, in Europe. There have just been so many positive tests from, from different labs the sequences that we have detected in samples from British Columbia have all been of European genotype.